had a meeting last week for uh, the engineers. Group. The bids were open on Thursday. Bids were open on Thursday, okay. Mm -hmm. We had two bids.
what can we do if, if we were to push that barbed wire fence back 20, 25 feet, follow the fence line, or or go through the trees? If we talk to that landowner and he got approval, uh, could we pave a temporary dirt road, go back on with gravel, just to give us extra access for three months? I mean, if it gives us three months, two months, or even one month, in my opinion, worth of access, it would be worth paying the landowner what it's what it's going to cost us to just, well not pay the landowner, just us having the expense of paving, not not paving, grading that dirt to where it's safe for vehicle, vehicle traffic. Uh, and then put some gravel on top of it. You at least that we already have a reclaimed asphalt at Public Works that we could possibly use. Um, if you know, just, just trying to think outside of the box, how else could we get access in and out of there temporarily? We did speak with the landowner. We got full approval immediately from the landowner. He uh, uh, wants to be a partner to the town and had no uh, no major concerns about it. So my question to you was, what is the next step to actually implement that? Do we need to go, go walk it, look at tree mitigation? Where would we? I mean, I would propose that we cut in as soon as possible, just immediately past the gas well there. But what I don't know is uh, what rules and regulations are there as far as uh, traveling next to, to that fence line, how far away do, uh, does vehicular traffic have to be from that old gas station? We need a, a I'm sorry, not gas station, a gas well. Uh, I guess we need to get some of those questions answered, but is it a feasible option that, uh, that we're willing to consider since the, the landowner is willing to, to get access? Jeffrey, I want to have to mention that today is about 12 feet from the edge of the road up to that fence. Right there in that easement area, right there. It's 12 feet. They're going to go down the middle of the road to attach to that middle pipe on Point Mr. Right at center. So, how many feet do they need for the split? They're laying that open 30 foot. So, 15 to 15. Mm -hmm. And, and the road is full. And they're full when they sit outside of that. That's for trench about 30 foot for safety. Okay. And there's fools when they sit outside that 30 foot. How much can they, they think they can open and close at a time on a daily basis? How much can they open and close? Right. So there's going to be some points where it can't be open at all because we're going to have that whole entire intersection open that our curb on point bit system. We used to leave and drop two school buses, up, school buses off in it. And there's no way that we can make it free and pass to there. Unless you do what Chris is talking about. You can go around it at that intersection, but even, you know, we're doing phase one, two, three, and four coming up point Vista. Even if you jump back in by the gas well, you know, if we're not done with phase two, which is past the gas well, past Mr. Nixon's driveway, that temporary is not going to do you no good. You're going to go to a dead end road. Okay, so you wouldn't be able to do that temporary access until we got done with phase one, phase two, and part of phase three. Well, that was one of the points we could talk to the animal. Well, let's restructure those phases to optimize the use of that land. Well, we can't, we can't start north, okay? We've got to start south. There's one we're starting at the end of building back. Yeah. There's a water structure. If you build at that end, you're going to have water coming into your neighbor's structure. Absolutely. It don't work. So you got to start at the outfall and build back. So there's no way to, to change up the phases of construction. It's, it has got to start there because of section on this. How about the, uh, the citizens on the west, the cases and the masses, those folks there? We're going to have local traffic only for those two that live on the, on the lift station and for the, the coals. The Van Nesses and the Casey's are all going to have access out at all, all times. But it's only going to be wide enough for a car to get down. And it's not going to be both directions. It's going to be one or the other. And I don't know which way. If I was betting on the two right there to this station, the first section is going to be north. And then once we get to phase three and four, it's going to be back south. And it's probably going to be the same for the Casey's and the Van Ness. And they're traveling right down the bar ditch. If we're throwing that rat, back in the bar ditches to give them a temporary road to travel which our direction to get around. And it's got to stay open for fire protection. So it's only going to be for through traffic only. It ain't going to be for all the Lakeview residents and, and motor homes and that sort of thing. We're going to sit uh, some temporary CTV, which is concrete traffic barrier, to block that trench because it's going to be that open overnight. There's no way that we can close it back and open it back up there. It's going to be a very intensive project. Don't get me wrong. And, and me and Danny had looked at the traffic control plan. Every which way from 
summits to try to figure out an easier way to try to keep all that traffic from going to the lake view. But unfortunately, at one point, that's the only way it's going to be able to go. But so, do you agree that there would be some options that for a, we don't know what length of time, it would be useful to have that temporary access? Yeah, you could once, like I said, once we get to halfway through phase three, and then phase four, and then phase five is the actual intersection there, Turbo Middle Point Vista. That would be a good time if it's justifiable for you know two months for those sections to drop whatever it would cost to do that. And something else you gotta think. I mean you're gonna have to put that gravel in there off the thick of and hold up those big motor coaches without having a soft spot with most people out of the basement or anything. Yeah. And if you get a soft spot over the weekend, we're gonna be in there fixing that soft spot over the weekend, paying over how to fix the soft spot, you know, a temporary road. So you're gonna weigh your options. So how do we go about getting a business case to see, you know, what would it cost us to do it right? And as soon right as a temporary room can be. We can ask the contractor to go off with their one y'all up to tonight. How much you would charge to go in there and lay that off? You're going to have to lay the grass off and go in there and lay the gravel down on top of it. And the gravel I've got won't be enough to do all the way across it. Okay. With the tree mitigation and consideration of the landowner sure that the fence that we push back is properly prepared for this guy. And you may have to silt fence that since it's going to be a temporary dirt, a dirt road. You don't have to silt fence that off to keep the road in the road for us to be Yeah. That's just... It's a lot to consider, but is it castle or river? Is this something we need to do? Is this kind of stuff? I think a couple things, Chris, and, and it's a good idea. I think it's worth exploring. The, more, the least amount that road is down, the better. I think what Jeffrey's saying is, is obviously phase one and phase two might might shorten up the window from three or four to five months to one or two, two to three at most, is what he's saying, if we can use that land. So is it worth considering and looking into? Yes. Um, the good thing is the timing of all this is going to be September, October. The RV park will be a lot slower in the wintertime. So I think we're in the bulk of this season right now. It's a good thing as well. But uh, I don't know if you can restrict it to cars only and not put RVs on that, that temporary lane and just for residents access and in and out only is what I would consider. But if that's a possibility. That was, that was what I was going to ask. Is there a way to, to say that you know the RVs can't go through there so we keep the heavy trucks and it's off of it and we just restrict it to residents only? The, the temporary road? Mm -hmm. Signage. Yeah. The signs only do this do a I, mean, I think it's definitely worth exploring. I mean, it's, it's going to be, you know, a huge inconvenience to have that shut down. And, and if we can lessen that time, cost-wise, if it's, if it's effective to do that. And if the landowner, you know, he's indicated initially that he's open to that. So. I think maybe we need to approach it, Jeffrey. I think you set a meeting with Anabon. And if they've got a time when we get it quicker, in order to get their amounts made to them faster, and if we do have a temporary road set up, we might offset the cost for them to go ahead and party in there. Give us a good price, <coughs> party in there, and, and, and do it. Instead of having five people out there every day doing that. So, uh, we need to sign on the, uh, the contract itself, and then Jeffrey, we'll need you and Roger, we will set that up and be on top of that to see what other options. Ladies, yeah. <coughs> you see that in here that. Uh, excavation um, and uh, per the engineer's letter that reads attached is a tabulation of the bids received for the above reference project on July 12, 2012 
Due to the experience of the town and Van Wiles references were not checked concerning the lowest bidder quality excavation incorporated. Both the town and Van Wiles have worked with quality excavation in, in the recent past, and the experience has been good. Quality excavation was a low bidder in the amount of $163,648. For the above reference project, Van Wiles engineer estimate was $1,130,215.15. Since the difference of 3%. Based on the information available, we see no reason not to recommend that the town award the bid on this contract to the low bidder, Quality Excavation, incorporated in the amount of $1,163,648 for the project. Okay. Just before I make a motion to second. I'll second. Yes. May I ask a question before we proceed with the vote? I, I just like to ask one question about the bid so that Jeffrey can my. I'm a layman. Help me understand that. Uh, we got some communication about uh, the drainage pipe material in the bid was drill maps produced only by one manufacturer. <coughs> was this a recommendation of uh, Dan and Baum or engineers to only put in the bid one particular uh, pipe, the what, drill max product? What had happened is that's the reason why the look on here the addendum was issued and it was extended by two days is because Somewhere when this all started back four years ago, that was the new pipe that we were going to use was the Dura, Duraflex. Okay. And that was the sole provider. They have since changed that to the metal corrugated pipe, which is what we've got down on the middle of Ronald Reagan. And that's the reason why they extended it. So it had, that's what they did when this was changed from that uh, Duraflex, or I think it's, I don't know what it's called. Is, is the metal corrugated the same thing as precast reinforced concrete no. pipe? No. That's RCP. So, in in our in our bid specs, we didn't have you couldn't bid RCP using RCP. Correct. Is there a, a reason for that? Because it's about twice as expensive. Okay, so it's an expense. Yes. Okay, and the only reason I'm going there is is because of you know one one statement that's a uh, reinforced concrete pipe is recognized by the Army Corps of Engineers as having a product service life up to twice that of either aluminum or steel. So, so we, we went with that because of cost, and this is a proven product. This metal we're putting in. Well, I, I, I remember talking about this. Yes. I just didn't know to compare it against the yes. concrete pipe. You know, and it's got very depths up to forty foot. Proven very depths up to forty foot. So. Okay. Thanks for the education. No problem. Okay, Councilman Parks made a motion. I did second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, Jeff. Just make sure we give it to folks. So. I uh, voted at E13. Consider an act in the ordinance of the town of Hickory Creek amending here to amend it. It's comprehensive zoning ordinance and amending the official zoning map of the town by changing the zoning on a certain tract of land. Described as approximately 13.527 acre tract of land located generally adjacent to the south side of Hickory Creek Road between Barclay Drive and State Road 5. We would particularly describe as Exhibit A. Cash here incorporated here on from its Current zoning is set for some family eating plan development. And we have a, a letter from HAF uh, and Associates. The town of Hickory Creek requests that Associates perform preliminary plan review for our new estates. Preliminary plan does comply with the proposed plan development in SF3 zoning. Recommend approval for the preliminary plan upon approval of the pro proposed zoning. Best case in the next so, start our discussions on this here. Uh, I'd like to just to say a couple things about this. I appreciate the citizens coming out during this public hearing and talk during the citizens' agenda as well about this because it is important to the town. Uh, a couple, a couple things come to mind here is: Do we want to see growth in the town? Sure, we do. Uh, growth is good for a town. It keeps your taxes low. Expenses go up every year, salaries go up, our policemen, uh, our town employees, uh, air conditioning in this place, all those things go up. So we, we're always looking for ways to increase the revenue. It can't always be by sales tax. As we've seen by the number of the last couple of years, sales tax can go down and can go up. Uh, this year we're up about $20,000, uh, which we're going to use part of that towards the parks on the EDC side. So uh, the town's been blessed in many ways as far as sales tax go, even during the downtime. So, uh, the other way that we, that we subsidize the budget is through the Dale Warren, which is property taxes. And, you know, if you plan on living in Hickory Creek for the rest of your life, 
You don't just say once your property taxes to go up. You want to stay down because you don't want to pay those taxes in. But if you're looking to stay here for five to six years, you want your property taxes to go up because when you go to sell your house, it's worth more money that you're going to take out of that house and go to the next place of residence where that's going to be. So the, the council, when, when developers come to town and they look at different plats, whether it be down the street here in Turbyville, whether it be over here at this the subdivision, uh, behind the subdivision, uh, the council has to kind of place the burden on their shoulders. Well, is this good for the town that I do for the town? Uh, I, I can tell you, nine years ago when I was a council member of this town, uh, we had a mayor, his name was Jim Clark. And Jim Clark and I met with some developers that built Turtle Creek Mansions down in Dallas. And Mr. Wheeler, which was the owner back then, that property then, they wanted to bring Turtle Creek Mansions to Hickory Creek and build on that property. And they wanted two-story, duplex uh, kind of things where it was gonna be upstairs and then park the garage underneath. So we had a stack of plans about this thick from the Turtle Creek and the Mansions when we met them and they said, hey, we felt like this would be really good for the town. And uh, at that time, we were up in the air about it. We, we had uh, the Lake View Subdivision come in with a lot of people that lived at the end of Point Vista that were against the Lake View Subdivision because they said, you know what, you're taking away the ambiance of the town because that's open land out there. Why are you going to build Lake View or Stan Pacific homes in that subdivision because you're taking away the whole countryside of Hickory Creek? So we heard that many, many years ago. And, and the mayor back then, Jim Clark, said the same thing. He said, gosh, you know, do we let these folks come in and build a two-story complex on this property over here that's going to overlook Standard Pacific, which was being built out at the time. So at the time, it, it turned the brick on the mansions, backed out of the deal. Uh, they decided that they, they weren't going to build after all, uh, after we carried these plans around for like six months, looking at them, examining them. It was going to be a very, very nice product. I mean, very, very nice. And these same folks down in Dallas that built that zone. It was a very, very nice product. We, could, we, all, we almost had that project right there that abuts the subdivision. But it didn't happen. So there's been some other contracts come on that property as well uh, that have fallen through. Uh, uh, Mr. Wheeler's kept the price of that land up pretty high, and he's held on to it for a long time. He bought that property back when he bought the property across the street where Extreme Irons at, which used to be a boat dealership. So years ago, he bought both properties at the same time because he felt like Hickory Creek was going to be a town that was growing in the future, and, and so forth. You know, it was going to be a plus. You know, in his book. So he, he since it sold that, he had this piece remaining right here and uh, had it up for sale. I think he's gone through a couple of agents on that property over there. He had it for sale for a while. Um, somebody mentioned the population of the town. You know, 5,000 5, is important. The last census, our actual count in the town went down from about 3,800 to 3,200. Right about 3,200 people. We've got a long ways to go before we get to 5,000. So, even with that development, steeple chase, departments, we've got a long, long ways to go. If we did get to 5,000, there's only a couple real good pluses for the town if we did. Anything that's ETJ in the town, we could bring into the town. For instance, the mansion, which is uh, this sold for over $10 million, is an ETJ. If your people get any tax revenue off that mansion out there. Do we get it from the south side? Yes. Do we get it from the north side? No. So no revenue comes in off that town. So it's going to be a long time before we get to 5,000. It could be six to seven years, I would say, before we ever get there, especially with that going backwards. Um, the gentleman brought up the, the cul-de-sacs and so forth, and um, that's very important, uh, very important to our fire department and so forth, and we're going to need to hear uh, what they have to say about that. Road bond, the uh, road bonds are very important to the town. Uh, usually when a developer goes in and puts in a road bond, he gets a two-year agreement goes back, he's responsible for two years for that road. Uh, I talked to our P&Z president, uh, Mr. Hawks, about that. And we discussed that in length, you know, if they put this road over this, this pond over there, you know, what happens in five years, four years? Is it gonna fall through? What happens, you know, and everything? So that, that, that's a big question in our minds as well. Let, let me assure the town, though, uh, that whatever decisions made by the council, our engineer, half associates, has to look over every single plan that their engineer presents to the town. We don't do that. The only thing we do is we see what comes up here after the fact. So half the associates goes through all the plans and puts their stamp on it as far as whether they want to go forward or not go forward. So that's kind of where we're at on that. 
But I just wanted to put that out there about the, the Nations, which was almost nine years ago, and, and what happened back then and so forth. And, uh, as we all know, it's SF3. Uh, I believe PNZ they presented the uh, a plan that was not SF3. They presented a plan with bigger lots. Uh, there would be no pond down there with these bigger lots. I think the, the lots range from 10,000 up to 14,000. I want to understand the lot size. Uh, but then I need the, the SF3 because SF3 is 9,000. So that was the proposed. Um, so anyway, that's just uh, just some garbage that I wanted to put out there before you enter the discussion and we hear from the developer on what they're planning on doing. So, council, that happy? Anything? I'll ask the developer, the engineer, to come up and discuss the project. And You'll we'll serve the state your name and address. You got a slide presentation. Discuss this issue. We have an open call sack. 
it's not ideal, but the hardship is we have no other options. We can't get down and back out of that property. We're not going to freeze the lake. We're not going to buy houses in Lakeview. We're not going to go across four property. So this is the option we have. Uh, what the fire chief wanted was a little extra pavement width. He wanted uh, five fire hydrants. He wanted four fire hydrants. We have five. He wanted uh, entrance off of Hickory Creek Road. And with these improvements, he also requested that we own the park on one side of the street, that we put up no parking signs along one side of the street. Uh, we agreed to all that, saying, look, we want to make the fire chief happy. Thank you, Mr. Chief. We want to make these folks happy because we never want to deviate from our fire safety these issues that we have. So this is the plan that we came up with. Uh, as early this afternoon, uh, uh, Chief Deason an emailed and said things look fine, project looks fine. We agree to all his requirements if you have to discuss with anybody any issues that they may have. But basically he's in agreement with this plan. So we took care of the fire chief first thing out of the bag. We knew that's one of the issues. So that was the deal. They just said you can go 600 feet and that's it and this fellow has an undeveloped property. It is going to be hard to get a minimum call sack in the ground there without having road side by side. So we did discuss that with him. We agreed all those issues. Uh, so now we're back to we're back to this discussion on PD zoning. The only variance we're requesting off the PD is the lot width. Everything else needs our exceeding. Lockdown slot is best in what we can put in there. I feel like it's a comparable plan. We like the fact that we're deeper off these existing houses. We like the fact that we've got one in the industry. And it's been our favorite plan all along. After the meeting with the, with the P and Z, we heard the homeowners. We said, well, guys, let's look at this. Let's look at the existing plan that would save that pond and that would maintain that space. We'll see a big hole right here where that pond is. When we looked at we see some similar lot planning, some similar street layouts. We just don't have a lot of capabilities on this property it is very long, very narrow. So we looked at it and said, yes, we can do that. We can do this pond. The, the downside is it gives us smaller lots. Instead 